Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So Trump tests positive for the beer flu. This is breaking news, and uh, some people are assuming that it could impact the economy. Right now, the uh, S&P 500 uh, pre-trading lower than yesterday's close. Uh, of course, the stock market isn't open yet in the United States. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones. Uh, okay, so we don't have a pre-opening number here on the chart, but I want to think that this can't be good uh, for today's stock market, and who knows if this could impact the outcome of other things like the election down the road, depending on how people react to this, depending on how Trump's diagnosis progresses. Of course, a lot of important people, celebrities, uh, politicians, they get the best medical care out there. So uh, I am feeling very confident that uh, President Trump will rebound from this. And is this gonna affect the crypto market? Well, let's take a look at Bitcoin here on the daily. Guys, you can see Bitcoin came down uh, to about 10,400 right now, trading at 10,451 per BTC right now. Uh, put it on the hourly here just to kind of give you guys a sense of what happened yesterday and in the early morning hours of today, Bitcoin coming back down. Some are suggesting that it had to do with this. Uh, Michael posted this on Twitter. BitMEX executive Arthur Hayes, Benjamin Dello, Samuel Reed, and Gregory Dwyer were charged with one count of violating the Bank Secrecy Act and one count of conspiracy. So let me read you a little bit of this. The co-founders of one of the largest exchanges for trading cryptocurrency derivatives have been charged with violating U.S. anti-money laundering rules as American authorities ramp up enforcement in one of the world's least regulated markets. BitMEX executive Arthur Hayes, Benjamin Dello, Samuel Reed, and Gregory Dwyer were charged with one count of violating the Bank Secrecy Act and one count of conspiracy. According to an indictment made public Thursday, Mr. Hayes is known for feuding with Bitcoin skeptics such as economists Nuriel Rabini and urging traders to gamble on the most esoteric digital assets. Guys, this coming from the Wall Street Journal, they are now switching gears, turning on us, it sounds like, and changing the narrative for Bitcoin. Okay, again, this is mainstream media. We can't have this hit, especially not at this moment. Let's not forget also that this is a tweet that Arthur Hayes posted back in February of this year. Is it called Ripple, XRP, or dog who knows? Who cares? It's worth more than zero. So it's time to trade the USD pair on BitMEX. Boo Yakasha. Well, Arthur Hayes, uh, now you are being charged. So what is this going to do with the optics of cryptocurrencies from the outside looking in? I think this could possibly set us back a little, but I do think that it will be more along the lines of the Bitcoin maximalists, the privacy coins, the crypto industry that we all kind of want to sweep under the rug so that real regulatory clarity can come to pass, so that cryptocurrencies like XRP can be utilized. I think if anything, it'll affect that part of the industry and hopefully not set back the regulatory clarity that we've all been waiting so long to pass. So guys, I thought I'd bring up this news because it is important uh, with regards to the context of the crypto market and uh, Arthur Hayes, who clearly is not a fan of XRP. Uh, I also wanted to bring this up from Mr. Whale at Crypto Whale on Twitter. When this support breaks, it is game over. And what he's referring to is XRP coming down below this zone here. I'll bring it up on the chart here. XRP to USD. And so let me put it back on the daily to show you guys here. Uh, this is the support line he's talking about. So since about June, we had seen an upward trajectory for XRP. It topped out at about 33 cents, then came back down. Okay, right now XRP is training about 23 cents. Uh, we did see it tumble along with Bitcoin, as I had showed you earlier, the Bitcoin chart. XRP is also coming down. And what Crypto Whale is suggesting is if we come down past this line, so if we come down below, below 22 cents, give or take, that could mean that we could possibly fall even lower. Uh, guys, I've got my target in here at 19.7.197 cents. Uh, that would be the next level of support that I foresee XRP basing in before possibly moving back up. So that is my target noted here. I am not suggesting that you buy XRP at that price. I'm just letting you know what I'm gonna do if XRP hits that target. So Crypto Whale also, uh, you know, assuming that uh, XRP could break support, uh, at least in the short term. Of course, guys, bullish all the way in the long term. This has nothing to do with the long term outlook of the crypto market. This is just for you uh, day traders or swing traders, maybe interested in making a trade within the shorter time frame. Not gonna dwell on that too much, but there is more adoption going on in the space, guys. And I think overall the picture is looking very, very pretty. 
I'm going to get to Jay Clayton later on in the video. I wanted to mention this, also brought to me by Michael at Val5 Links. Adoption, folks, Diginex Limited will trade on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol EQOS, where it will offer investors the opportunity to participate in the growth of digital assets. Now, this is big because this company, a crypto and blockchain-centric company, is going to be trading on a legitimate exchange, namely the NASDAQ. So Digital Assets Financial Services Company, Diginex Limited, announced on Thursday that it has completed a business transaction with 8i Enterprises Acquisition Corp a NASDAQ listed special purpose acquisition company which allows it to list and trade on the NASDAQ and here's a quote Diginex Limited will trade on NASDAQ under the symbol EQOS where it will offer investors the opportunity to participate in the growth of digital assets the announcement adds that the company's warrants will trade under the ticker symbol EQOSW this is a watershed moment for both Diginex and the cryptocurrency industry with the listing of the first ever company with a crypto exchange on the NASDAQ Diginex CEO Richard Byward commented this also presents the first opportunity for anyone trading in the u.s capital markets to buy directly into the equity of a digital asset ecosystem and opens the door for financial institutions to participate in the enormous opportunity that digital assets present so this is big for the crypto space and it's kind of a shame that it's coming on the heels of this loser being charged with u.s rules violations uh nevertheless hopefully we can forget about that and focus on the positive so for those of you guys who do not know what diginex is uh here is their website i will also link it in the description of the video for those of you guys interested to peruse but i think it is very very important to understand the scope of this the fact that this will offer investors the opportunity to participate in the growth of digital assets this is a legitimate company in the financial sector and now they're being listed on the nasdaq great news there wanted to thank michael at val5 links on twitter for posting that and another one here guys from michael the united states government is projected to be 98 percent in debt by the end of this year, according to the Congressional Budget Office, so next year, government debt will reach its highest level in history, they say at 107% of GDP. So here's where we were during World War II, okay? Um, oh, I just clicked on that. It's not going to expand that. So I'll just close that back down and I'll just expand this in post. World War II, okay, we were up here and we are roughly at the same stage now as we were during World War II in terms of debt. Okay, you can see the changes uh, from World War I, the Great Depression, World War II, and then we came back down. Uh, then there was the Great Recession of the early 2000s, then the pandemic. And this is actually projected to go much higher than we've ever seen. Now, these are the numbers for the United States, uh, but I have a feeling that uh, many other countries are in the same boat with regards to debt. A lot of other countries around the world have also closed their economies. Uh, some have not. And, uh, you know, some countries are faring better than others, of course, during this pandemic, depending on many, many different factors. Uh, there aren't many countries, or rather it isn't the majority, that there are many countries that are also coming into an election this year and that their current president has now come down with the beer flu. These are all interesting questions that we have to analyze and, uh, you know, nobody has a crystal ball. We don't know what the outcome is going to be. But in the case that there is a downturn and panic and the dollar perhaps losing value because of a loss of confidence in the American market, what you will see, and this is my opinion, is investors investing in safe haven assets, guys. Whether it be crypto, whether it be precious metals, anything that has historically been safe. Now, I know cryptocurrency hasn't been around for a long time, but uh, the way it is being framed, the way Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency assets are being framed in this current financial narrative is that they are safe havens. They are a hedge against traditional fiat. And so this is why I bring you guys this information. This is why I think this is important. Take a look at your crypto portfolio. If you're holding stocks, Make sure to be very, very careful because we could see a huge dump for the stock market. Uh, and, and conversely, we could see crypto and precious metals gain a lot of value in the meantime. So again, you know, when we look at the crypto market on the day to day, on the hourly chart, this is all just to kind of get a sense of what's going on on the day. But ultimately, guys, when you look at the outlook, when you when you zoom out and you take a look at these charts, actually, I'll bring up Bitcoin because it's a lot easier to see Bitcoin on the wider time frame. You can see we are still very, very bullish for a longer time frame. Even if Bitcoin comes down and corrects, uh, you know, under 9,000, even if it comes down here, to be honest with you, 7,500, we are still ultimately very, very bullish for the crypto market. And that isn't just Bitcoin. That is the rest of the crypto space because we know everything follows Bitcoin. 
And guys, the number of crypto users has now shattered 100 million worldwide. This from a Cambridge study. So the University of Cambridge estimates that the number of global crypto asset users has increased by a whopping 189% since 2018. In a new global crypto asset benchmarking study, the Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance identifies up to 101 million unique crypto asset users across 191 million accounts opened at service providers in quarter three of 2020. The CCAF says the sharp increase may be due to both an increase in the number of existing accounts as well as a heightened ability to connect individuals to those accounts. Though staking in the crypto asset sector is primarily driven by retail investors, the CCAF's report also finds that a growing number of European and American institutional investors wish to expose their portfolios to crypto assets. European and American institutional investors, guys, looking to expose themselves to crypto assets. This is not new news. This comes on the heels of this announcement as well. The crypto space is seeing more and more legitimate people entering it. And so in my opinion, that is something to definitely pay attention to. Guys, this from XRP Crypto Wolf, the European Central Bank will decide whether to launch a digital currency towards the middle of 2021. So we're seeing advancements with regards to CBDCs, uh, in this case, the digital euro. So the ECB, as guardian of the euro, provides currency in two forms. We issue banknotes and we transfer electronic deposits to banks and other financial institutions. Digitization has spread to every corner of our lives and transform how we pay. In this new era, a digital euro would guarantee that citizens in the euro area can maintain free access to a simple, universally accepted, safe and trusted means of payment. A digital euro is not meant to replace cash, but rather to complement it. Together, they give people more choices about how to pay and make it easier for them to do so, increasing financial inclusion. And this has been the narrative from the ECB. We've heard Christine Lagarde talk about uh, their CBDC complementing cash and not replacing it altogether. So some more information here about the digital euro guys i will link this in the description this coming from the ecb's official website and down here when will this be ready during the preparation phase we are working on the concept starting practical experimentation on possible designs and discussing with stakeholders and international partners towards the middle of 2021 we will decide whether to launch a digital euro project this will be followed by an investigation phase on user requirements and service providers so there you go. They're going to make the decision towards the middle of 2021, kind of coincidentally, you know, around the time that a global financial reset could occur. Okay, I'm eyeing mid to late 2021, early 2022. As we have heard Martin Armstrong predict from his model, guys, I did a couple of videos on Martin Armstrong this week. Uh, after I saw that documentary, I was totally blown away. I'll link the video I did a few days ago up here in the top right-hand corner if you guys still haven't caught it. This guy has created an AI model that is very, very accurate at predicting market turnaround. So, uh, very interesting documentary if you guys can find it. Don't know if it's on Amazon Prime or... Ne I don't think it's on Netflix, but uh, it could be on Amazon Prime. Of course, Amazon Prime does have different content for different uh, geographic regions as well so hopefully it's available in your country gonna keep moving along though guys ripple job offer hints that the company may start building distributed trading platforms and as you know we've been hearing uh, a lot of uh, openings job openings occurring at ripple they're looking for a lot of different uh, positions to fill so one of the recent vacancies ripple published is for a senior software engineer for liquidity the job posting states that the engineer will be busy creating a distributed trading platform that provides seamless access to crypto markets in in real time and here is the description i'm not going to read you the description but what is this insinuating could this have to do with more verticals we know ripple has talked about that in the past or could it just be to continue to provide the liquidity that ripple has always proclaimed that they've needed in order to best facilitate odl payments around the world it is up for debate i mean you can interpret it in a few different ways of course liquidity is first and foremost for ripple we know that they need to keep building out odl corridors around the world so that could be and likely will be the prime initiative for the person that gets this job however we have heard about the new verticals and so keeping these people on board we're Working towards different goals to expand the XRP ecosystem doesn't seem like a far-fetched notion. Gonna continue on here though, guys. Uh, this from Dior Don Data on Twitter. And I don't know what exchange he's talking about, but apparently exchanges are going down. Get your crypto off the exchanges. Heidi Warren down here says, I just purchased through Coinbase this morning, so I have to wait three to five days for it to be available to move. Blah. Uh, true and not true. Those in compliance will be fine. Crooks will get the hammer. I think these people are uh, responding to the BitMEX news news uh an archangel down here already on the ledger guys the ledger is key 
The only way to keep your crypto truly safe is through cold storage. And I just did a quick Google search here, crypto hack statistics. And when you look at these statistics, 2019 saw more cryptocurrency hacks than any other year. This uh, published at the beginning of 2020, so at the beginning of this year. And if you just look a couple of headlines down, it says 2018, a record-breaking year for crypto exchange hacks. And this uh, right at the end of 2018. So it looks as though hackers are stealing crypto more and more because more and more exchanges are coming online. There still isn't that regulatory clarity in the space. So we are seeing crypto exchanges getting hacked more and more often. More and more crypto is being lost. And until we have solid regulatory clarity across the board, uh, this is still going to be kind of the Wild West. So the best way to keep your crypto safe, in my opinion, is in cold storage, whether you choose the Ledger Nano or something different. Some of you guys have been asking me, why do you have two Ledger Nanos? Well, I did have this incident where one of my, uh, where my Ledger Nano pooched on me. I, I don't think my uh, computer had the right OS, so the, um, so the update didn't work properly, and uh, I couldn't get it going. Luckily, Ledger did send me another Nano, and I was able to restore on the second Nano. All my cryptocurrency was safe. And if you guys are looking for a Ledger Nano, uh, I do have an affiliate link in the description. You can use it if you want. You do not have to use it, though. Just wanted to bring this to your attention because this is going to happen more and more, guys. And as we see the market rally, uh, expect more cryptocurrency hacks. I saw this, guys, from Martin Volk. Institutional crypto platform Talos emerges from stealth mode. So thanks, Martin, for tagging me in this. The latest effort to smooth a path for buttoned-up investors, Talos, an institutional-grade conduit for the crypto ecosystem, is emerging from stealth mode to serve brokers, custodians, exchanges, and over-the-counter trading desks. The platform started out in 2018 and is backed by an impressive list of investors, including Autonomous Partners, Castle Island Ventures, Coinbase Ventures, and Initialized Capital. Over the past year or so, Talos has been quietly onboarding a core group of capital market participants so that the platform can make its debut in a revenue-generating state, said Anton Katz, the firm's co-founder and CEO. It's not that we were really hiding, but it's just that we come from a capital markets background and would tend to shy away from talking about things before they are ready. When you're selling to institutions that can be frowned upon, Kat said in an interview, now I think we have reached a good point working with a good set of customers and the platform is in a more mature state. So yet another platform for crypto investors, institutional crypto investors, to be able to trade cryptocurrency. So we're seeing all these options for institutional crypto investors to invest in cryptocurrency. Hmm, I wonder why. Do you think it's a coincidence, guys? I highly, highly doubt it. Of course, cryptocurrency has gained popularity over the years, but, you know, institutional investors just weren't really interested. Crypto regulations are coming down the pipe. More institutional options for crypto traders are coming on board. This is going to be a new emerging asset class. Whether that is because... Uh, you know, the nation, where was that, uh, where was that, where was it here? No, it wasn't that one. It was this one. Whether it's because we're projected to see an economic world of hurt in the coming years, or whether it's just a sheer coincidence, ultimately means the same thing. Institutional investors are interested in cryptocurrency. I, I personally think they see the writing is on the wall. I don't think that they have very much confidence in the stock market at the moment. Uh, this is uh, the S&P on the weekly. We have reached new highs. The Fed has been pumping money into the market since the, uh, since the beginning of the beer flu pandemic. And this house of cards, in my opinion, is ready to fall flat. So more options for institutional investors in crypto just makes sense. That's just my opinion because they want to be able to hedge their bets. They want to get their money out of the market and put it into something quote unquote safer than stocks. It bodes well for you and me guys. I mean, we've been investing in crypto for a long time now and I keep accumulating more as I'm seeing these dips, as I have extra money on the side, I keep accumulating more XRP, more Bitcoin. I've recently been getting into VeChain. I have a pretty decent BNB position. This is going to be the future and I know a lot of uh, normal people and I put normal in quotes because I just consider them people who don't understand crypto. Basically the people outside of crypto Twitter and the YouTube world. A lot of those guys don't get it. A lot of those guys must think, are you crazy investing money into cryptocurrency? It's so new. But realistically, if you do the research, if you see what's going on, you might actually be singing a different tune. Guys, more VeChain news. This from James Rule XRP. VeChain has now partnered with a premium Jamaican coffee company 
So this from btcmanager.com, uh, Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee, I've heard of them, is the latest product to be listed by Real Items, a newly launched marketplace that tracks and guarantees the authenticity of its products using the VeChain Thor blockchain. Uh, so this with regards to coffee traceability in a tweet on September 29th, Real Item unveiled the 287 year old Jamaican coffee brand after teasing it on September 24th. And here is uh, the tweet to that effect. Following this launch, Real Item will avail Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee Company with a limited non-fungible token on the enterprise grade and high throughput platform. Consumers can extract the product's supply chain journey by simply scanning its QR code. And here's a quote from CEO David Menard, VeChain Thor blockchain makes NFT related products more resilient to volatile market conditions. The native features have enabled us to build client oriented services that drive real customer success without worrying about spiking gas fees. It provides us business readiness and promotes productivity by removing the scaling issues plagued by other chains. So boom, another partnership for VeChain, a 287 year old Jamaican coffee brand, uh, a brand that I have definitely heard of. I don't know if you guys have ever traveled to Jamaica or had somebody travel to Jamaica and bring you back coffee. Nine times out of 10, it is this brand. I'm telling you guys, everybody is going to be moving on the blockchain VeChain, another sleeping giant ready to wake up, ready to be adopted by the rest of the world. And this guy's another one from XRP Crypto Wolf. Ripple has granted a new patent for executing smart contracts with smart oracles. So this coming from CTO Stefan Thomas. Ripple has been granted a new patent by the United States Patent and Trademark Office on September 29th. Uh, the invention is credited to former Ripple CTO and COIL CEO Stefan Thomas and Evan Schwartz, the co-creator of the Interledger Protocol for Blockchain Agnostic Cryptocurrency Payments. The patent was originally published on June 7th, 2018. The system described in the patent applications allows so called smart oracles to execute smart contracts. A smart oracle refers to a computer platform that is capable of receiving information about a condition specified in a smart contract. If a third party is involved, there have to be assurances that it wouldn't tamper with the software that includes a smart contract. And here's a quote, guys, a result produced from an execution of a copy of the software by a corresponding platform can be received from each of a plurality of platforms. A number of matching results of execution of the software can be determined. Whether the number of matching results is equal to or greater than a threshold can be determined. The software can include an implementation of at least a portion of the act associated with an agreement between at least least two entities. So the XRPL really ramping up in the arena of smart contracts. We had the Flare Network announcement months ago now. Everybody's still anxious to get their Spark tokens. And now Ripple Lab smart contracts through what's called Smart Oracles. Great news there coming from the Ripple camp. And guys, I had to mention this tweet here from Anders L. So it seems Spark brings the best of the XRPL settlement, Ethereum smart contracts, and Avalanche consensus, plus Jed won't get any Spark from the airdrop. You now can use smart contracts along the XRPL, plus I suppose it will not be accused of being a security since we do indeed have an airdrop coming. So it is a win, win, win. Cheers to you too, my friend Anders L, at X double underscore Anderson on Twitter. There still is this looming question, the official announcement of if XRP is going to be a security or not. Many are thinking no. And now it's looking as though Jay Clayton is explaining the same. I got to thank the cryptic poet for posting this. I wanted to play you guys this short clip. This is Jay Clayton talking about regulation of digital assets. You know, what is and is not a secu uh, security. And, uh, you know, if you go broader than that crypto asset taxonomy, uh, you know, has, has the focus on uh, those issues in particular uh, really prevented you from addressing other potentially less controversial developments in the blockchain and, and digital asset space, such as, you know, for instance, tokenized versions of, of traditional regulated uh, financial instruments. And I'll, I'll just start, Jay, I'll start with you and then, and then Brian, if uh, you want to go as well. Yeah, sure. And, and uh, it's a, it's a good, it's a very good question, Jax, because you read about the problems, but we've got a lot of people working on areas that aren't problematic, areas where we're bringing this technology um, uh, to bear. And, and also, I think you can characterize uh, a number of our recent discussions that we've had with the OCC as, okay, and, and where can we be clear that it's not a securities law issue? That's a lot of, of what Brian and I, and uh, thanks to our great staffs, have been talking about um, over the past few months. And how do, how, do we, how do we, in the payment area, the maturation in the payment area, how do we make it clear to people that if you're not trying to finance your network, you're not trying to give people a return on your network, it's probably not a security. But if what you're trying to do is finance the build out of your network with your, with your token or provide people with a return for using the network with your token, 
you look at the traditional test of security, it's pretty clear it's a security. So did Jay Clayton just say, with regards to payment transfers specifically, which is exactly what Ripple does, coincidentally or not so coincidentally perhaps, that if you're using a token to try to build out your company, that indeed would be a security. But if that coin is not trying to build out the company, i.e. if it's used to transfer payments, if it's used for ODL, as Ripple has been doing for the last God knows how long, that it isn't a security? I think Jay Clayton here makes it abundantly clear that XRP is not a security. And so I gotta thank the Cryptic Poet for that tweet. Guys, I'll link this in the description. Uh, the Cryptic Poet actually links his video with the entire uh, interview, so you can check that out if you want. I wanted to bring you back to this tweet though, guys, that I had on my channel back in December 2019 with regards to Jay Clayton. The new plumbing is here. This, uh, he was talking about, so the question was asked about the Libra coin. He focuses on the current financial system. And listen to what he has to say in case you guys missed that video. But the, the announcement um, was a focal point for regulators of different types to recognize that digitization and the digitization of the plumbing and other aspects of our financial system, including payment transfers, et cetera, it is coming. The, um, what I'll say, just the natural economic forces that it unleashes, taking um, uh, fat out of the system, for back, lack of a better term, it's, it's happening. Now, we have to recognize that that's happening, recognize our mission, safety and soundness, investor protection, fair markets, and ensure that as that digitization takes place, we're being true to those principles. But we should not be fighting that digitization. This guy is pro-innovation, and he ultimately says... The new plumbing is here. We can't fight innovation. We are not going against digitization. And just recently in this interview that the Cryptic Poet posted, Jay Clayton ultimately saying a utility coin that is used not to fund a company is definitely, in his opinion, not a security. I think this bodes well for XRP hodlers, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.